If it smells, remember, there's a management issue and you need to look into solving that problem. Good morning, modern setters. It is a nice chilly morning. It's the coldest morning we've had so far. It'd be a great morning to get a fire going in the Kalamazoo wood cook stove. But I gotta go to work so I won't be able to enjoy it. So we're not gonna do that. Instead, we need to build the composting bin so we can handle all the waste from our composting toilet. Let's get started. Better let the tractor warm up. Look at that, we got some ice. Man! Got to turn our key and let our glow plug stay on for about 10 seconds and then we can start it. There's a couple of reasons why we chose the area we're putting the compost bin for the compost toilet right here. It's out of the way. I don't have to look at it. And the big reason is, is it's right next to my wood chip pile. I need to add more carbon to our compost. I just grab a scoop and put it in. It'll work out perfectly. If you haven't seen any of the videos on our composting outhouse, I'll put a link to it right here. It'll bring you to an article that talks about the composting outhouse and why we chose it. always handy to have a bunch of pallets kicking around your homestead. You never know what you can use them for. If your compost pile is smelly, there's a couple things that are wrong. You don't have the right material. So for us with a composting toilet, we don't have enough carbon in there if we're smelling anything. So we need to add more carbon and that's why we're right next to the wood chip pile. We're toenailing the pieces together. It doesn't have to be super strong. It's just to hold compost. It's just that way the compost can stay in a nice pile. You don't have to worry about it falling over. Now as the pile gets bigger, I can put forge on the front or I can stick another pallet. But for now, I want to be able to get in here and have easy access to the back. I'm planning on putting wood chips in here the compost from our outhouse and we'll be using the leftover stuff from when we harvest the pigs and I'll put them in heavy wood chips and I'll put something in the front so the animals can't get in and we're going to compost it in a deep heavy rich nitrogen system and it'll compost all the bones for us. That'll be another experiment to see how long it's going to take. We're not going to be using any of the compost from our composting outhouse for two years. So that's a perfect compost pile to add all of our scraps for when we have the pig harvesting class here in a couple of weeks. There was a few things I was thinking about when I was deciding the location for our compost pile for the composting outhouse was 
Is it close to a nitrogen sauce? Yes, it's right there. Easy access. Yes, we have a road right here that we is plowed throughout the winter so we can get to it. The composting outhouse is right there. So it's easy, flat walking. It's not a hard place to get to. It's not right next to the house. You know it's nice when you see your compost pile steaming. Good morning, Mrs. Pigs. Good morning, Spots. Now we need to go to our outhouse and get our first bucket load. Now I know some of the things I'm talking about composting today isn't what the average person wants to compost to think about. Poo, human poo, human manure, whatever you want to call it, and meat and bones and just leftovers when you're harvesting an animal. But it's something we need to think about and it happens. So if you have a sewer system or you, if you have town sewer or a septic system, when your septic system's pumped or when you flush your toilet for a town sewer, it goes to a sewer treatment plant. There's a few processes that it goes through. In the end, 90% of the times, it's sold as fertilizer for farmers. So your poo and everybody else's poo is growing somebody else's food or your food. You don't know whose poo is growing your food. I know whose poo is growing my food. If you want to find, if you want to dig deeper into that, I posted a little blog post over at Lumna Acres. I'll put a link to that article right here and in the description down below. Let's get composting. Another thing, rot happens. Composting is natural. It's what's always happened with poo and dead rotting material. That's how we built the great soil of the world. It's as simple as that, and nothing smells even better. Remember, if your compost smells, you're doing something wrong. Whether you, it smells just nasty, or if you can smell the poo, you're doing something wrong. You might have too much nitrogen in it, not enough. You might need more green material, or you might need more brown material, or more water. It takes a lot of water to get stuff to compost also.
If it smells, remember, there's a management issue and you need to look into solving that problem. I hope I didn't lose you in today's video. Just kind of the point is, if you want to live an intentional life or be more sustainable, there is no away. Like when you throw something away, you don't throw it away. It goes somewhere. It doesn't leave the earth and just magically disappear. It goes to a dump or a landfill, ruins our land, we incinerate it. We do all sorts of kind of things. And I have no idea what the answer is for it. I just know we need to think about it and it happens. It's not just gone. When you buy something and go to the dump, it's not just gone. When you flush your toilet and the poo goes down the drain, it's not gone. It goes somewhere and something happens to it. And we don't think about that kind of stuff. And if you want to live an intentional life or a more sustainable life, that's kind of the stuff you need to think about. And your poo and your food waste and your harvesting waste is part of that. And that's one of the things at Lumna Acres we're working on right now and we're thinking about. And that's one of the reasons we did the composting outhouse. I'd love to know your thoughts on that. What do you, what do you think about of throwing stuff away or living an intentional life? Leave it in the comments down below. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Share it. It really helps the channel grow. We'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye. That's a wrap. Till next time.